Number 12 then from the 2009 advanced tire. First two terms of a geometric sequence, right? So geometric sequence questions, it gives you the first two terms. Obtain, obtain expressions for the sum of the first n terms and the sum of the first two n terms in terms of p. And then there's more to follow. Well, if it's geometric, no matter which it is, the first term is p. And the common ratio will be the division of these, which is also p. And then the formulae. Well, the sum to n terms of a geometric series is given by a times, and then you take your choice, either 1 minus r to the n or r to the n minus 1, depending whether r is greater than 1 or less than 1. I'm going to go for the r to the n minus 1, so the denominator would also have to be that. So that means s of n would be, well, a is p, r is p, so it's p to the n minus 1, over p minus 1. Similarly, s of 2n would just be, since it's the same formula, it's going to be p times p to the 2n minus 1 all over p minus 1. And that would be the first part. And that's taken up quite a bit of room, unfortunately. Then, then, given that s of 2n is 65 times s of n, show that p to the n is 64. Right, so I've written a wee note of it down here. So what have I got then? I've got p times p to the 2n minus 1 over p minus 1 equals 65 times p to the p to the n minus 1 over p minus 1. Now straight away I notice something. That can't be 1. p cannot equal 1 in these expressions, otherwise I'd be dividing by 0, and then these sums wouldn't exist in the first place. Neither can p be equal to 0, because then the, term, the terms would just be 0 in the first place. So, what have I got then? Given that those can't be 0, I can safely multiply by them. So the, the p's can disappear by dividing them out, the p minus 1's can divide by multiplying them out, and I'm just left with this. p to the 2n minus 1 is 65 times p to the n minus 65, which will then give me a little equation, bringing it over to this side. p to the 2n, bringing that over and bringing that over, that'll be minus 65p to the n, and that'll come across as plus 65, take away the 1, that's 64 equals 0. Now that's a quadratic in p to the n. I've got a numerical term, a term in p to the n, and a term in p to the n squared. p to the 2n is the same as p to the n squared. So I've got a pair of brackets equal to 0, that'll be p to the n, that'll be p to the n factors of 64 that make 60, add up to 65, 1 and 64, that's negative, so the greater one's negative, that says they're both the same, which gives me two answers. So either p to the n is 1, or p to the n is 64. But, I've got p to the, p cannot be 1, neither could it be negative 1, because then you would just have an oscillating sequence of negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, in which case the sum to n terms would either be 0 or negative 1. Certainly wouldn't come to 65 times any previous one since all the totals just become zeros of negative 1. So in that case, I can say that means that p to the n must equal 64, since I know that p to the n can't equal 1. Then, given also that a3 is 2p and that p is greater than 0, I'll put a note of that, I didn't want that oscillation anyway, obtain an exact value of p and also the value of n. Well, the connection between all of these terms is to get the next term you multiply by the previous term by the common ratio. So I know that a3, you could put this down, a3 must be p times a2. In other words, 2p must be p times p squared. So that altogether then I've got knocking out the p's, p squared equals 2, so p would equal root 2, now it could be plus or minus root 2, but it's just going to be root 2 since p is greater than 0. So that's the first part, p is equal to root 2. Then the last part would be, so what's the value of n? Well I had this expression, I had p to the power n is 64, well that means that root 2 to the power n is 64. Now root 2 is 2 to the power a half, so that's 2 to the power a half n is 64. You don't need to use logs for that. You can just jump straight in with the powers. Because you know what power of 2 makes 64? That would be power 6. So that means a half n is 6. Or you could rewrite it in power form. 2 to the half n is 2 to the 6. In which case, 
those powers must equal each other, in which case n equals 12. And there it is. So that was question 12.